.NET 6 has been around for only a few months. However, the first .NET 7 preview is already available to download. In this video, I want to provide an overview of what we can expect from .NET 7. Hi, and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, I'm a software engineer with more than 10 years of experience with the .NET platform. On this channel, you'll learn all about .NET development. It's still early in the process and some features could potentially not make the cut and other features could find their way into .NET 7. However, as .NET is developed in the open, we can follow along and get a decent picture of what we can expect from .NET 7 already today. This video gives you an overview of the current state of .NET 7 and summarizes everything I know and have heard about .NET 7 so far. Before we jump into the details of .NET 7, let's quickly look at the .NET release cycle and the support policy. Starting with .NET 5, Microsoft committed to a yearly release of a new .NET version. The release will usually be on November each year. Let's quickly discuss the difference between even .NET version numbers and odd .NET version numbers. .NET 6 and .NET 8 are long-term supported versions. Long-term supported versions get patches for three years. .NET 7 will be a short-term supported release that will get patches for 18 months, which means that after .NET 8 comes out, you have around six months to upgrade from .NET 7 to .NET 8. There are three major topics that we will see improvements with .NET 7. .NET MAUI is the new cross-platform native UI development toolkit for .NET and will be part of .NET 7. If you haven't heard of .NET MAUI before, check out the What is .NET MAUI video popping up on the screen and linked in the video description. Currently, .NET MAUI Preview 13 is released. There will be an official release of .NET MAUI within months based on .NET 6. However, with .NET 7, there will be tooling improvements and performance improvements for .NET MAUI development. Microsoft wants to focus on the developer journey for cloud-native applications. Specifically, they want to improve two points with .NET 7. Simplifying the setup and configuration necessary to implement secure authentication and authorization. Improving the performance of application startup and runtime execution. There will also be investments in Orleans, a .NET cross-platform framework for building distributed applications. They also plan to simplify and improve the developer experience for building and deploying containerized .NET applications. Microsoft wants to help developers with existing .NET applications even more. They plan to improve the .NET Upgrade Assistant to support additional use cases. In short, it should become even simpler to upgrade existing .NET applications with .NET 7. A lot is going on in ASP.NET Core development. I mentioned four improvements that I believe to be the most important. If you want to read about all of the things going on, check out the link in the video description. Additional performance improvements with .NET 7 to make it faster and more efficient. .NET 6 already had a massive impact on performance and .NET 7 will take this even further. Even if you don't run into performance issues today, it will save you money without altering your source code when running on the cloud. HTTP 3 is shipped as a preview feature in .NET 6 and will be part of .NET 7 and enabled by default. In future .NET 7 preview versions, we will see performance improvements and additional TLS features. Minimal APIs were introduced in .NET 6 and allow you to create lightweight web APIs without the overhead of controllers. If you haven't seen it yet, make sure to check out the Introduction to Minimal APIs video popping up on the screen right now or check out the link in the video description. With .NET 7, we will get additional improvements and support for currently missing features like grouping endpoints with a common route prefix. Endpoint filters will allow you to implement cross-cutting concerns that you can only do with controllers using action filters today. In short, with .NET 7, minimal APIs should get the same abilities that controller-based APIs have today. Blazor Hybrid support will allow us to take existing Blazor components and put them together into a desktop application, 
using a web view control with access to all underlying hardware APIs. It will allow developers to use web technologies to build desktop applications with access to system resources such as the local file system or a webcam. There will also be web view controls for Windows Forms and WPF applications. It allows us to modernize existing applications and integrate new Blazor components into an existing application. With Visual Studio 2022 version 17.1 and the .NET 6.0.2 SDK, you already have access to C-Sharp 11 preview features. You can enable them using the preview value in the Lang version property in your .cs project files. For more details on setting it up, read the blog post linked in the video description. Now let's go through some of the features in C-Sharp 11. It's important to note that not all of those features are confirmed to be part of C-Sharp 11. Some are proposed features and Microsoft collects community feedback on them. Also, I cannot go through every change in this short overview. One of the more controversially discussed features is parameter null checking. It's a new syntax shorthand to check whether a method parameter is null and if that's the case, throw an argument null exception. As you can see, the new syntax allows you to express the same intent using a double exclamation mark instead of the detailed if statement including a throw expression. Another proposal is list patterns. It's a further improvement for pattern matching in C-Sharp that you can already do in F-Sharp today. It allows you to match data against lists and arrays. Another proposal is to allow new lines in interpolated strings. You can learn more about those C-Sharp 11 proposals in the blog post linked in the video description. Entity Framework 7 Preview 1 includes bug fixes and foundational work for future updates. I didn't want to skip this topic, but I won't detail it here. You can check the blog post linked in the video description if you're interested in how to install and use Entity Framework 7 today. There's so much going on. Just a few months after .NET 6 has shipped, we already see a clear picture of what will be coming before the end of 2022 with .NET 7. It's a great time to be a .NET developer. There are things I haven't covered in this short update. If you go to the blog post announcing the .NET 7 Preview 1, you'll find additional information about ML.NET, WinForms, WPF, NuGet and Roslyn improvements. That's it for this week's short update video about what's coming with .NET 7. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future.NET content on my channel. See you in the next video.